somehow rings familiar, it's because we've heard about Jacob wrestling before. We are told that Jacob and his twin brother Esau wrestled in Rebekah's womb. In chapter 25 of Genesis, it says, the children struggled together within her to the point where Re Rebekah cried out, if it should be this way, why do I live? So Jacob's life to this point in our scripture today is bookended by wrestling matches. In a sense, Jacob's whole life has been a giant, painful wrestling match with almost everyone he comes in contact with. This mysterious man, Jacob, is now wrestling with, uh, this mysterious man, Jacob, is now wrestling with, will rename him Israel, meaning one who strives with God, a foreshadowing of the nation of Israel who will strive with God. One scholar I read translates Jacob's new name as Scrapper, Scrapper with God. I think that's even better than Striver, for Jacob truly is a Scrapper if you read this whole narrative. He scraps for everything, his birthrights, his blessings, his spouses, his work, and whatever he perceives as his rightful share of things. I remember right as I was getting out of cartoon watching phase of my boyhood, the dog sleuth Scooby-Doo got a puppy friend named Scrappy-Doo. Now Scooby-Doo and Shaggy were scared of their own shadow, even though their job was to solve scary mysteries each episode. Then Scooby would get his Scooby snack in him and finally have courage to really confront the mystery he was facing. But Scrappy-Doo, his puppy sidekick, was ready to scrap with any and everything that was in front of him right from the start of the episode. His catchphrases were Scrappy-Dappy-Doo, or let me at him, let me at him, or puppy power. Scooby would always have to hold Scrappy back from prematurely engaging in whatever scary thing was in front of him. Our Jacob is a scrappy do going after anything and everything. It always seems like he is saying, let me at him, let me at him. Even though I don't find Jacob's scrappiness appealing in many of his stories, I have to give him some credit for consistency in his scrappiness. You see, at some point, he realizes this man he is wrestling with is of God or from God or maybe even some physical manifestation of God's self. For Jacob names the place of this wrestling, wrestling match Peniel, the face of God. He says, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. Even though this wrestling partner is of God or is God, Jacob is still scrappy, going after what he wants. And what does Jacob want in this case? The name of his opponent. But this mysterious divine figure won't give it to him. It's one of the rare moments in Jacob's life that he goes after something and doesn't get what he wants. Instead, this divine figure pulls a reversal on him and gives Jacob a name instead and saddles Jacob with a hip injury to mark this scrappy moment. Sometimes we want one thing and we get another in our own scrappy pursuits, don't we? For many of us, this time of COVID has been a time to clean out rooms or places in our house getting rid of stuff we have neglected handling in the distant or not too distant recesses of our houses, decluttering our lives while we can't go out and do the things we normally would like to do. It seems to me that Jacob has some of the strongest interactions with God when he is decluttered from all the things he has tried to acquire. The beginning of our scripture today says this, 
The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids and his 11 children and crossed the ford at Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. And then the most important line, it says, Jacob was left alone. There was no person and no things left to distract Jacob. And God swoops in in that moment and scraps with Jacob. One of the observations I have about God in relationship with Jacob is that God really tries to work on Jacob when he is all alone. It's like there is this vulnerability and openness with Jacob when he, he is not around family members or others or the stuff that he has acquired or wants to acquire. God comes in a dream when Jacob is alone with next to nothing on his way up to live with his uncle Laban. Now God comes as Jacob is headed to meet up with his long lost brother Esau. In both cases, Jacob is alone, feeling vulnerable as he faces his unknown future. Many of us don't like to be alone. Many of us also don't like the idea of vulnerability. Why? Because it feels tremendously out of control. During COVID, we've been hit with a lot of alone time and a lot of our sense of vulnerability. But maybe these are the exact moments, solitude and vulnerability, where God can do something with us. My family always makes fun of me because my legs are always cut up. And on any given day, I am randomly bleeding from one of my leg cuts. Sorry, I know this grosses some of you out. Part of this is because I love doing yard work and I often don't put on long pants to get into the shrubs or wooded area and bushes at my house. So I get all scraped up evidence and scars from my battles with my yard. Jacob, our scrapper, gets a battle scar as well from his divine wrestling partner, struck on the hip socket and a limp as a result. Jacob strikes me as the type of guy that needs this kind of reminder as he reconnects with his brother, his wives, and all his belongings. His limp reminds him that God is a present, present figure, the divine in his life, that he's not as in control of his own destiny as he thinks he is, that there is something bigger and better than him, that he can't just get every single thing he goes after. He can't get everything he wants that he needs to be dependent on God who is bigger than himself. At the end of our story, as day breaks, we are told that Jacob is limping because of his hip. Don't you wonder how long that limp lasted? If I had a dime for the number of times I heard people say during COVID, I can't wait for everything to get back to normal. Well, you know, how the saying goes, I'd be a rich man. COVID is like a limp that won't go away. While I want people to stop dying and I want folks definitely to be employed, I don't know that I want everything to get back to quote unquote normal. For COVID and our cultural events have woken us up and made us uncomfortable in ways that we need to wrestle with and not just move on from like they've never happened. We need to have a little limp, a little bit of something to remind us of how we've changed and why we're cha changing and where God is. Maybe that little limp will make us more dependent on God. Like Jacob, make us a bit more humble and more sensitive to each other, our neighbors. So a little prayer to close. God, use the limps each of us have from this time to draw us closer to the people 
you desire us to be. Amen. Well, friends, I'm going to try again, like I tried last time, to break us out into breakout groups. One of the great gifts of Zoom is that we, uh, we get to see each other and hopefully now talk to each other. So in a moment, I'm going to ask Barton to unmute us all, and I'm going to open all the rooms and send you to breakout rooms, hopefully with three to four people in them. And some of the questions you might answer as a result of our sermon time or our scripture is, what have you learned from Jacob's journey? When is vulnerability good for you? And what's a good limp, a good limp that you are dealing with? So again, what have you learned from Jacob's journey? When is vulnerability good? And what's a good limp you are dealing with? And so I'll send you out to your breakout rooms. You may have to click something on your screen to move from the main room to the <coughs> breakout room, but you'll all be invited back into the main worship after five minutes. Mm -hmm. Breakout room 18. I'm in 23. That's my lucky number. All right. Well, it seems like uh, most everybody is back in. And I wanted to share a few announcements with everybody. And to do that, I'll share my screen. First of all, I want to thank all of you who dropped off food for North Raleigh Ministries yesterday. Uh, you can see some of the photographs of our Hunger Action team uh, collecting food that y'all dropped off. And uh, it's not just food. I believe it was hygiene materials and also cleaning supplies. And so thank you so much for that. And I'm going to share another image. Tonight from 7... 7 o'clock to 7.30 on the south end of our church building. Our uh, VBS crew will be collecting adolescent underwear and socks, and this will go to note in the pocket. And so again, if you would like to donate some of those needed items, adolescent underwear and socks, it can be dropped off on the Cranbrook side of the church parking lot from 7 to 7.30 tonight. Finally, I want to show you all some pictures of what's going on at the church. And here is a picture of the memorial garden right now. Um, we want to thank those of you who have given to the 60th anniversary capital campaign. And finally, I, I need to say amen, and finally, we have broken ground on what will be an accessibility ramp. And if you see my cursor in the doors closest to the sanctuary there, the, the ramp will be brick and enclosed and kind of come out like this and will run all the way down to this window down here, which is a part of the John Knox room. And so for the past two weeks, they've been um, deconstructing this area and getting it ready for construction. And out of the picture over here near the ramp, they have also taken out the flower bed because we are going to put in more niches for those who may wish to have their remains, their cremated remains here in the Memorial Garden. Finally, I wanna show you one more picture since we can't get inside our building. This is uh, the inside of Westminster Hall. And you can see that it's been repainted on these walls. The kitchen has been repainted. There's been new ceiling tiles put in there and we put in a movable wall. This is the frame for a movable wall. So for f smaller events, uh, maybe the fellowship team can be getting food ready on this end, the far end, for fellowship after church, and we can close this, the, the closer end up for Bible studies, and so, or for various small groups that might meet uh, on Sunday or during 
the week. Um, this area that's more white will be a storage closet. And you can't see from this photo, but the stage has been removed. So again, thank you all for your generous gifts and, uh, and we'll keep you posted on all these changes that are happening. So let us uh, continue in our worship now and we invite you to the table. Friends, you will want to gather the things for the table if you have not already done so. Uh, whatever table you are in, in your home, and whether you're using bread and wine or juice and crackers, um, whatever that is, um, it is surely blessed by our Lord. This is our Lord's table, even though we are in many places this morning. As noted, our, um, our forebearers in the early Christian communities worshiped in homes, in households of one and households of many, and so we do that this day. But we do remember that when our Lord was at table with his disciples after he had risen from the dead, he blessed and broke the bread, and it was in those actions that their eyes were opened and they recognized who he was. So this is our Lord's table, and wherever you are, the place has indeed been prepared by our Lord, and all are welcome here. Let us pray. Loving God, creator and sustainer of all life, you spread out the heavens and you establish the foundations of the earth. You lift up mountains and hills. You pour out oceans and rivers. You make all the creatures of the earth to show your glory. And human beings, all of us, are made in your image to care for what you have made, your good gift, this beautiful and precious home that you have provided for all. When human violence and corruption and greed laid waste to your good creation, you sent a great flood to wash away the stain of sin. With the covenant sign of the rainbow, you promised never to let the earth be destroyed again. And then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus Christ into the world to heal our brokenness and make all things new. Christ is the word that brought order to chaos, bringing all things into being. Christ is the light that overcame the darkness, shining from the dawn of creation. Christ is the water that quenches our thirst, flowing from the hearts of believers. Christ is the bread that rises from the earth, feeding the poor and the hungry. Christ is the vine that connects all creation, binding us together in the unity of the Spirit, causing us to bear fruit for the world. Christ is the life that death could not destroy, who gave his life in love for the world, and who lives and reigns forever. And so as we come to this table, we remember your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, and we take from your creation bread and wine, the very fruits of the earth. We joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer ourselves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Around these tables, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And now hear us as we pray together the words of our Lord saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before Jesus died, he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took a cup from the table and he said to his disciples, this cup 
this wine represents my very blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, you do so remembering me. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. And the cup of salvation, Christ's blood shed for you. Let us pray. Almighty God, this is what I envision when I envision the links your table goes to. It goes out into every corner of the universe, for you are the one that gives us great nourishment. Thanks be to you for this meal in community and for the blessings that bring us together on this day. May we continue to wrestle with you. May we continue to be formed by your nourishment into the people, the community you call us to be out in the world. And all God's people shall say, amen. So at this time, I'm going to bring up our closing hymn, God is so good. And let me bring the words up, Phil, and then you can take it away. Okay. Can everybody see that? Let's all join together. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, God so good to me. God cares for me, God cares for me, God cares for me, God so good to me. Let's use us this time. God loves us so, God loves us so, God loves us so, God so good to us. God is so good, God is so good. God is so good, God so good to me. Friends, be strong and courageous. Stand firm in your faith. Let all you do be done in love. May you know God's smile and that you are loved beyond your wildest imagination. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of us all. Amen. Peace be with you, friends. So good to see all of you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Have a great week. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Peace be with you. Bye. Peace, Peace be with you everybody. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Be safe. Bye.